Valparaiso University football is underwritten by the following. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic for treatment of sports injuries and orthopedic surgery. Doctors Malater, Leland, Toma, Luker, Gruska, and Kay use the latest in equipment and techniques to ensure a quick and thorough recovery. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic with over 20 years of service. Locations in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Costas Foods and the following suppliers, Jack's Pizza, Coca-Cola, Arizona Tea, Frito-Lay, Pepsi Bottling Company, and Jay's Chips. Costas Foods, locally owned and serving you at 2800 Calumet Valparaiso, 801 Broadway Chesterton, and U.S. Highway 6 South Haven. Costas Foods, where shopping is a pleasure. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Valparaiso University Football. Along with head coach Tom Horn, this is Todd Eichow. Today we take a look back at Saturday's exciting victory over Kalamazoo College. We welcome in starting fullback, Nate Bobeck, and we'll talk about Saturday's upcoming homecoming contest against the Toreros of San Diego. First off, we visit with the head coach, Tom Horn, whose ball club got back in the win column on Saturday, and coach obviously pleased with the victory. Although some shaky moments down the stretch, I guess. Well, it was a pretty exciting game for the fans to watch. Uh, more exciting than I would like. Uh, we've got some work to do on defense yet. Our defense has not played well yet this year, and that's a concern for us, and especially with all the returning stars we have. So we've got a lot of work to do on defense and, and maybe make some adjustments there and, and uh, hopefully play better this week against San Diego. Well, the defense struggled at points. The offense did not struggle. As we take a look at the highlights, we'll see it was a high shooting affair down in Kalamazoo where the Crusaders were able to post the victory. Coach, early, though, uh, they were moving the football until a nice sack by... Matt Culp with some help from John Harrington. Uh, Culp had a good game on Saturday and, and breaks through there. And you know, Culp is, is an undersized defensive lineman, so he did, did a good job there getting past that guy to the quarterback. That slowed down the drive for a moment until McDonald went to Sherwood, the first of his, I think, 12 catches on the day. And he shows his great quickness and running ability after he makes the catch. Oh, Sherwood's an outstanding player. Got great speed, great quickness, and outstanding hands. Made some diving catches on Saturday and, and was really the uh, spark. Other than the quarterback, he's a spark that really ignites them. The defense would hold on this opening drive and force a 35-yard field goal try by Joe Mazzola. And as you can see, it just barely hooks to the near side. You keep him off the board on the opening drive. Well, that's good. After they completed a long pass, and here's Nate Bobeck, our guest on the show today, uh, running for uh, nine yards on a trap play. Crusaders, because of a penalty, would give the ball back on downs. And then Valpo comes up with a big defensive play by Josh Burning. Uh, Josh had a uh, real good game this week. Uh, I think stepped it up from a week ago. Had a real, real outstanding game. Well, that turned out to be a key play. It was second and two. Now it's third and three, and they've got to throw the ball, and there's Josh Burning with the pick, and here are the first six points of the football game. And there's not many people on a football field that can catch Josh once he's in the open field. Josh has got outstanding speed and uh, great heads-up play by him to put us ahead. Crusaders go up six to nothing, and... Uh, Looked like the back trailing out of the backfield. He read it perfectly from his linebacker spot. The extra point, though, is missed, and kicking was a problem area for you on Saturday. And we didn't kick very well uh, from the placement there on extra points, so we decided to go for two a lot after that. Good defensive play just a moment later. In fact, right after the kickoff, Matt Culp strips Thompson and Saul Shahid, one of his two turnovers on the day. That's two offensive plays in a row. They've turned the ball over to us, so we don't mind that. You decide to run option a little bit. Running it to the receiver side this week more than usual, and Ozzie Young able to pick up 12 yards. Yeah, they were running their free safety to the alleys to the pitch man, so we just used an extra receiver to block him, and the option went well for us. Next play, and I believe it's the same play, right, Coach? Different it's, formation, but same play. Right, it's a lead option. Uh, they were in a different defense, so whenever we saw that defense, we got a ball to this play, and uh, you know, our players did a good job adjusting. And on third and goal, and Nate Bobach somehow is wide open. Well, Nate did a good job going at the defensive end there, who's supposed to cover him and, and fake a block and run past him for the touchdown. So the touchdown, and then you decide to go for two, make up for the mix, miss point after, and Nick on the roll right on the money to an open Scott Heinrichs. Yeah, Scott is six foot five and has great moves, and he's really a hard person to cover, especially with the size of the corners that they had. Saders up 14 to nothing at this point, and McDonald turns a what looked like would be a sack into a big play. Perfect throw. Yeah, we did a real sloppy job on special teams and on defense of tackling Saturday, and we're working hard, harder on that this week to do a better job of that. Second quarter from the VU 12 on second and short. Josh burning the big hit on Hannah and a loss of a yard. 
That sets up third and yeah, it's a goal to go, about the 13 yard line. And Sherwood on the slant and he actually had to call timeout first. Yeah, he, whenever he went to his face mask, they were throw a fade route and our people picked it off and started yelling fade, fade, and he called timeout because he knew we knew what the play was going to be. And there's Sherwood streaking over the middle and into the end zone. Yeah, man to man coverage and uh, you shouldn't be letting receivers inside. If they're going to beat you, they got to beat you to the outside and not a good job of coverage there. The touchdown on the PAT and now it's 14-7, Coach. Well, they're right back in it and as you can see right here, there's a pretty good play by Josh Burning on the sweep uh, to their right. Saul Shaheed helping out, loss of one. Second and five now from the VU 32. We'll see excellent coverage by Ronnie Cezanne. Uh, that's Actually inside the man. Right, inside the man and uh, in position to pick it off if the ball was thrown a little bit uh, closer to the receiver. Power eye set on fourth and short. You figure they're going to run it, they cross you up. Turns out to be a great play call. Outstanding play call. Uh, that, that's a good situation uh, when you're man-to-man -man coverage and trying to keep them from getting a first down. Jeff Pierce, who actually was playing because their starting tight end, Matt Doobie, was injured, and Pierce had a huge game. That touchdown ties the game at 14 after the PAT on play action and an excellent defensive play, this time Andre Murphy. Andre Murphy playing good coverage there. Yeah, the tight end was a surprise to us because we had seen the other tight end on tape all week, and this guy's pretty good. Here he is again, and, and look at the stiff arm and drags Ike and Igbo for an extra eight or nine yards. Pierce for 19. They move down to the VU 15-yard line on fourth and six. Mazzola comes in, and this time he sneaks it through. 17-14. You see, you see a nice lead. It's disappeared. Yeah, we... Uh, didn't seem to move the ball on offense and uh, give them some good field position and they had an opportunity to capitalize on it. And they short kicked throughout the ball game. Joe Nowak, the up man, takes it. Had a nice return going until he coughed it up. And this is maybe the key series of the game. They've got all the momentum, 17-14. And now they get after the turnover, they're looking to add more before halftime, but three straight incompletes. And we see a, an excellent defensive play there by Chris Helton. Now down the middle, great play by Saul Shahid. So defense need to rise the occasion and did there. Yeah, they did. They got six turnovers on Saturday. And at times they looked spotty, but they made big plays when we had to. Because it was three incomplete passes, you got the ball back with time, time to score. You went to the two-minute offense, and the big pass to Michael Tolbert picked up 24. And then here's Ozzie Young out of the backfield, sideline route. This got out of bounds, stopped the clock, stopped because the we're clock. down to about a minute to go in the half right now. We like this because we get the chance to score here before half, and then we get the opening kickoff the second half. Biggest play of the drive, third and 15, and Dave Massett with his biggest catch in a Crusader uniform picks up 19. Absolutely sets us up for a, a touchdown here on the next play to Scotty Heinrichs. Single coverage backside, and he burns him pretty good. Fake the out, went to the post, touchdown. And you'd go for two and make it 22-17, and a two-point pass to Nate Bobek. So 22-17 at the half. Probably feeling pretty good because it could have been, you know, 24-14. They had the ball, great field position with the score 17-14, late first half. And they had been moving the ball very right. well. The quarterback set a school record for passing last week, so uh, he's a very, very good quarterback. McDonald much improved from last year, I thought. Absolutely, and he has more weapons to throw. Last year they had Sherwood, who was their best player, and he broke his arm in the third quarter of our game. And uh, they didn't have the other wide outs in the back of the backfield in this tight end that they're throwing to right now. I think that tight end's making a statement to the coach saying, hey, I should be the starter. Many more points scored in the second half. We'll take a look at those exciting second half highlights when we come back after this timeout on Valparaiso University football. Valparaiso University football is underwritten by the following. Signs on time. Create signs in all sizes and materials. Special canvas banners, wood signs, plastic, metal, and magnetic. Indoors or outdoors, Signs on Time uses state-of-the-art materials including vinyl lettering. Signs on time next to the patio in Merrillville. 769-4488. Mike's Sporting Goods, your team sports professional. Mike's has NFL and college team crews and jackets from Starter, Russell, and others. A great selection and Mike's great value. For your team sport needs, Mike's has it. Shoes from Nike, Reebok, Converse, plus uniforms, trophies, custom screen printing, school jackets, equipment, and more. Mike's Sporting Goods, Maryville, Crown Point, Hobart, and Michigan City. 
Mancino's Pizza and Grinders, 706 and a half Lincoln Way in Valparaiso, home of the hot sub sandwich, served on their very own bread made from scratch daily. Delivery available, 477-5610. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Crusaders led at 22-17 at the half, and coach, any concerns at halftime? Well, stopping their offense was definitely a major concern. I, I think our, our offense felt that they could score, and, and we did do that in the second half. And um, we talked about making sure we got enough points in case uh, that, that, uh, the two wideouts and tight end and quarterback hitched up a few more times. Okay, as we take a look at the second half highlights, we'll see plenty of offense, and the Crusaders did a good job moving the football early. He went. Different formation with Ozzie in the slot, running a little more option that way. Yeah, we, went, we were in unbalanced set. We had the twin receivers plus a tight end on the same side. As you can see right there, they're up on the right. And they a little improvised here on what was a big play because it was third down. Yeah, see what they have to do. They have to keep en enough people on the back side to cover the option. So when you move the tight end over to be unbalanced, they can't cover everybody. And you see Nick on the rollout. And play, I think you... You know, you looked at it at halftime as a play that maybe would be open for you. Right, well, if you remember, Scotty Heimers dropped that one early in the first half. Uh, he came out the field and said that it was open, and we, we put it in, and we, went to, we decided at halftime we're going to go to it at least one more time again in the second half. Ozzie breaks three tackles on the touchdown, and you go for two. And this time, it's well defensed. Yeah, we missed a crack block there on, on the free safety. 28-17 the score, and they come right back. It's that tight end again, Pierce. Nothing fancy right there. Uh, just a little seam route. Uh, linebacker's got to get underneath that, help us out on that a little bit. And the next play, Lindstrom, the fullback, who barely ever touched the ball, got a touch and a touchdown. Make it 28-23. Now they're going for two. They're trying to going to try and run the option, and they got a delay. Or, um, a delay a game foul, and 25 second clock ran out of him. Forces him to throw some heavy pressure and a pick right there for Ronnie Cezanne. Actually, seven turnovers in the game, but of course, on the extra point try, that doesn't count in the statistics. Nice throw here, and a great catch. Threw it where the only place where it could be completed, low and away, and great catch by Michael Tolbert. And Mike's trying to figure out if the referees call it a catch or not. Bob Cracknell got a little more playing time coach at the fullback spot, and boy, did he run hard on that 12-yard pickup. As his first run of the day, you know, Nate came out in late in the second quarter with a, with a turned ankle, so uh, Bob Cracknell ended up playing the rest of the game. Three plays later, the option, and look at the move right there by Nick Browder. And into the end zone he goes. One of two long touchdown runs in the second half. Yeah, we'll see another one a little bit later on here, which is even more of an outstanding run than that, that one was. They get some pressure on him, and a nice play by the linebacker gets the pick, and here we go. One of the most exciting plays in college football, that two-point conversion the other way. That was a four-point turnaround there, and, and could have cost us later in the game as we found out. A return by Josh Howey for two points to make it 34-25. And they come right back until the tipped intercept by Ike and Igbo, and he nearly goes the distance. Unfortunately, a lot of this is called back, but you can see what he can do in the open field. And you can see that Ike's pretty fast, and you can see number two chasing him down there. Got great speed. Now, most of that did come back on an illegal block, but the intercep interception stood up. And here comes Nick on third and short. And what was that, a design run all the way? Well, on third and short, we call a sprint out pass. Uh, he looks to run first, and he saw it was there, and he, and he went and got in the open field, and they couldn't tackle him. And they said, Michael, he said, Michael Tolbert, get out of the way. I'm going into the end zone, and the Crusaders get six more. Nick Browder with a huge third quarter, en route to becoming the Pioneer Football League's Offensive Player of the Week. And going for two, they put every pressure on. He throws the ball away. 40-25 our score with three minutes to go in the third. See McDonald on the roll this time, under pressure, and what a great pick by Saul Shahid right there. Sensational. That's an outstanding catch. That's a tough catch And look to at the block by Josh Burnham, coach. That's a true tattoo block. Late flag comes in against a, a Crusader, but a nice defensive play halted that drive, and another good defensive play coming up right here. Uh, Timmy Risen forces a fumble. He's going down. 
Referee said his knee was on the ground, so they retained possession. Early fourth quarter, Sherwood underneath on first and ten will pick up 14 yards. Good uh, spot there of his explosive speed. And here comes a great catch on third and ten. It looks well covered, but look at Hannah go up and get that football. Yeah, free safety came underneath it. And we were in three deep coverage, so he should have been behind it, neither knocking it down or picking the ball off. That was an easy pick. And this stays in position. This time out of the power eye, they run toss sweep, and Hannah follows his blocks. Just a freshman, he looked pretty good. Touchdown, and here he comes on the two-pointer, but this time Ronnie Cezanne makes an excellent defensive play. And Ronnie just fights right outside the block and makes a great open field tackle there. 40-31 the score. Crusader is unable to move the football. Jennings gets off a good punt here, but here we see the unbelievable ability by Sherwood in the open field. Look at the speed there. And he gets them all the way down to the 20-yard line. And Darren Rodriguez, uh, our safety valve on punt team, there, forces him back into another tackler. And it turns out to be a big save of a touchdown because a strip on the very next play. And Saul Shahid, who had two turnovers himself, comes up with a cause fumble right there. I, he still caused two fumbles uh, on the day, and, and Matt Murphy, a sophomore defensive end, recovered it for us. You come out on the option. And Nick picks up a big first down. This is a great drive for you. Yeah, a 15 play drive, 88 yards. Outstanding job by our offensive lineman. Here's a very big play on. Huge. Third and six. And over the top, Daryl Jackson, great catch. A nine yard pickup on third and six. They're really fighting up hard for the option, and they left the tight end wide open in the flats. And fresh legs in the game, and Jody Hart. And look at that move right there. He beat their free safety, maybe their best defensive player. And he beat him easily into the end zone. Jody Hart, the fastest crusader. 4-4-3 in the 40-yard dash. 24-yard touchdown run, and because you're up 15 here, you kick the extra point to go up 16 at 47-31. They come out on the option, and here's Hannah. I talked about his great running ability. Well, he's going to be a good one for him, just a freshman. You see the spin move, and now the leg drive. Picked up 20 yards there. He was third team in the depth chart a week ago, and we saw him on tape and thought he was the best running back, and there's the time to get him in the game. And they get right back in, and that's fourth in goal. And they lob for the touchdown. And then they get the two points to the tight end, Pierce. And all of a sudden, it's a ball game now. About two minutes to go, 47-39. Actually, then closer to three minutes to go. They go for an onside kick. This is well played. Uh, the offense, the receiving team doesn't need to let it go 10 yards. If you can field it on that big hop before it gets to 10 yards, do so. Absolutely. If you sit and wait on it, they get closer to you and they can make uh, things happen then. They get the ball back, though, on fourth and two. They stop Ozzie, and they put together a great drive of their own. Over the middle, Green for a first down, pick up 16. Now on fourth and 10, only about 45 seconds to go. It's that tight end again, Pierce. And he picks up 22 yards and gets out of bounds. They would move down to the 15-yard line before Adam Zolvinsky makes the pick. Now, Coach, is he trying to lateral the ball here? Yes. He is? Can you find him? <laughs> Should hang on to it. I saw he's pretty fast. You see the tight end catching him. Yeah, that tight end. Tight end player. A, he's a heck of a player. So that seals at Crusaders 47, Kalamazoo 39. Let's take a look at the stats. You'll see, obviously, plenty of offense, Coach. Uh, key stat, as I look at it, the four picks your defense had. Four picks and two fumble recoveries. Uh, we had one turnover in the game, which was on the kickoff return team, so our offense never turned the ball over. At the first game, we haven't done that this year, and we hope that that trend continues. But troubling, though, is the fact they did pile up more than 500 yards of offense, right? Absolutely. It was a good thing we got all the big play turnovers or they could have had a, a bigger day than they had. And once again, as we've mentioned many times on the show, the team that rushes the ball better usually wins the football game, and that was the case. Well, we had a 330-yard rushing day and 282-yard rushing day in two of our three ball games. And uh, if you can control the game on the ground, uh, you, you, usually you're in pretty good shape. Okay, some scores from around the PFL. And those Dayton Flyers continue to roll while the Butler Bulldogs continue to struggle. Right, Coach? Well, Wisconsin Stevens Point shut them out 37 nothing. We, of course, a week ago lost to a team from the same conference, and Stevens Point's probably a third or fourth level team in that league. So uh, that's a pretty good conference. Uh, but Dayton had no problem. 
And they're be, rolling. Well, Dayton beat Platteville also from that same league, and Platteville's middle to lower level team in that league. And they, Dayton struggled a little bit with Platteville. Drake, as expected, rolls over Aurora, and yes, Thomas Moore, Evansville less. Yes. Where have I heard that yes. before? Thomas Moore, a two-point victory over Evansville, but that's a pretty good performance by Evansville against a uh, Thomas uh, Moore team, which is considered pretty good on this level, right? And they're undefeated. Uh, they're, they're three or four and all, so you know, they have a very quality football program. 16-14, that final in San Diego gets off the schneid with a victory over Cal Lutheran, and defense caused a big play that game. Well, the San Diego scored 14 points in offense. They had a kickoff return for a touchdown, and they picked off a pass on the one-yard line and, and, and walked in the end zone with it. Cal Luthen did a pretty good job against them defensively. Okay, let's check the uh, standings now. Overall, we see the Dayton Flyers, the only unbeaten team in conference play. Uh, overall, after Evansville's loss. And uh, everybody kind of feeling each other out right now. Dayton appears to be rolling, while Butler appears to be struggling. Those are, I guess, the two trends which are set. Yeah, sure, it certainly looks that way. And, and, of course, we knew Butler would struggle after losing the entire offensive line and their fullback and all those great blockers they had a year ago. I know Mickens isn't quite having the same year he had a year ago. Okay. You mentioned uh, Butler lost their fullback. Valparaiso lost their fullback as well going into the season, a three-year starter in Trevor Bell. So you needed somebody to fill the slot for you, Coach, and you went with a guy who's been playing running back for most of his career, right? Well, Nate was a tailback out of high school and played tailback for his first two years here. And, you know, Nate's such a hard worker in our program and a great team player and a great attitude all the time. Uh, we needed to find some place for Nate to play. And he could either sit and, and be backup for Ozzy Young for his last two years or put him at fullback and, and back up Trevor Bell, who at times had some uh, injury problems. And then you'll know, get a chance to play his senior year and, and, and play his full senior year, which has been happening for Nate. Nate Bobak as a running back coming out of high school and a running back for your first two years in college when coaches talked about you moving to fullback, what did you what did you think? What was the feeling? Well, I wasn't too sure at first, but then as coach said, you know, it was either be a backup for the next uh, two years that I was going to be here or else I could get a chance to start. And I said, well, you know, I'll go ahead and make the move. And then I started working out with Trevor Bell uh, at the end of my sophomore year. and getting to know some of the things that go along with playing a fullback and it's working out well for me now. Nate, I remember when you came in, you were not the biggest guy on the football field. To think of no. you playing fullback, you obviously had to put a lot of weight on, you had to put uh, do a lot of work in the weight room. Yeah. How much weight have you put on in the last Well, when I came years? here my uh, freshman year, I was 5'8", uh, about 170 now, 5'8", 195. And uh, my, my bench and incline and everything has gone up and uh, my uh, lifting abilities have improved. So. I'm, I'm happy. The adjustments are obvious. You need to block a lot more, right? Oh, definitely. There's a big difference between playing in college, playing uh, tailback and fullback. And in our offense, the fullbacks require more to more to block for Ozzie and Nick than run the ball. But I have no problems in doing that at okay, all. Okay, we're going to see also that you've improved your catching ability, and you had a big play on Saturday, a touchdown. And we'll talk about the play as we take a look at it. Um, simple play where I guess you you will see on the bottom of the screen, rub past the end. How'd you get so open? I don't know. I asked uh, Mike Tolbert after the play was over, and he said that his guy went with him, which freed me open. Plus, the guy that was supposed to have guarded me came, and my job is to brush the upfield shoulder of him so the guard can come around and hook him, and it just worked out perfect, and I was wide open. Coach, good play call. Oh, well, th thanks a lot, Todd. <laughs> Did, I mean, had you noticed anything? Have they been coming hard from the outside and leaving the flats open? Well, I know. We'd, we got on, on the 10-yard line and ran, ran the ball the first two times and so I want, we want to make it look like we're running the ball again and we'll play action and and uh, Nate does a great job decoying on that play so it, it ended up working well for us. Okay, now you have to feel good about what the offense has done in at least two out of the three ball games going into San Diego, right? Yeah, most definitely. It's always good to, uh, we had to come back and, and uh, show that offense that, that we were here to play and uh, we did that against Kalamazoo, and it's a good feeling leading into, into uh, San Diego. Yeah, let's take a look at the matchup, Coach. Uh, yeah, you feel like you own one. You took the lead in the final minute last year, only to let it slip away 33-27. Well, I think so. I, you know, our players, are, most of them are back from last year, and I don't think they've forgotten what happened out there last uh, against San Diego. We went ahead with 48 seconds to go and thought we maybe had the game, and obviously found out we didn't. So we, we owe San Diego one, yes, most definitely. And they've got a, they had a real good running back in Rucker. He's not back, though, right, Coach? Right, which is, I'm, I'm glad, for, <laughs> sad for San Diego, but I'm glad for this week that he's not going to be there because he had 1,333 yards rushing last year, and he was going into his senior year and was probably ready really to have a great year and 
then go back to school. They haven't thrown the ball either as effectively as they did last year so far. Now they've made a transition with a new quarterback. Uh, Vince Moisel was a three-year starter for him and an outstanding quarterback, as you well know, and, and could very, throw the ball very strong. Arm was a big guy that could run as well. He was a double, triple threat at times. And their quarterback this year is nowhere near the player that uh, Vince Moisel was. Okay, around the conference, there's actually another game, intra-conference game. Uh, that's Drake going to Butler. Drake won that matchup, uh, make that Butler one last year, 28-20 at Drake. But the way the two teams are playing, you'd have to say Drake's the favorite, even yeah. though it's at the bowl. Absolutely. Uh, Butler's have a struggle, and they've got some problems, maybe internal problems. And uh, they haven't scored in three weeks. Georgetown gave Dayton a game last year. But that was at Georgetown. Nobody beats Dayton in their house, do they? Well, it doesn't appear like it <laughs> until maybe October 28th when we go down there. 70 out of 71, the uh, Flyers have won on the home field. Very impressive. Nate, best of luck goes out to you. Thanks a lot Thank for you. coming in. Uh, Coach, biggest key to the game on Saturday? I think still maintaining our, our uh, offensive line, doing a great job, and getting and freeing our backs up to run the football, and Nick to run the football. That's, that's really a key. Okay, we'll see. Big ball game, it's homecoming. Special thanks goes out to Nate Bobeck. Special thanks goes out to the head man, Tom Horn. It's homecoming. We'll see you over at Brownfield on Saturday, and we'll see you back here same time, same place next week on Valparaiso University Football.